I am John, Prince of Azure, defender of the secrets of Entra. Fabulous power was revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and said, wait, that's not right. But fabulous power was revealed to me the day, well, I went into the portal. So we jump over here and I clicked on this particular little button right here. And this one, I set it to yes. And when I set it to yes and click saved, I got fantastic powers. But uh, let's take a step back and understand what that exactly is doing. So we always talk about Azure subscriptions. And remember with our Azure subscriptions, they trust a specific entry tenant. That entry tenant is providing the directory service, housing all of the different identities that are used for the role-based access control on that subscription and the resources inside. I am giving some user, a group, a service principal, the managed identity, which is just a special type of service principal, a role at a specific scope a subscription, a resource group, a resource, or a management group. So in this case, we have our particular entry tenant. And then somewhere way, way down, we have our subscription. And our subscription has all of our different resources within it. And when we configure our subscriptions, our subscriptions trust a specific tenant. Now, underneath our entry tenant that all of the subscriptions trust within our organization, there's actually a root. So you can think about, well, there's a root object that sits directly below our particular entry tenant. And then what we have under that root is the root management group. And then you can go and create whatever other management groups you want under that. So you can go and create an entire hierarchy of different management groups. But ultimately, a subscription will roll up to a specific management group. So we've got all of these are the various management groups you've created. And by default, if I just go and create a new subscription and trust my tenant, it's going to roll up under this root management group, but you can then go and move it. And we can see this particular root management group. So if we jump over to the portal for a second, firstly, before I jump over, just pay attention for what is the tenant ID of my particular entry. You can think it just ends in 143. Now, if I go and look in Azure and look at my management groups, you'll notice I have this tenant root group. And if I look at this tenant root group, one of the things you'll see is its ID, well, it's exactly the same as my entra ID. So the root management group will always have the same um, identifier as your particular entra ID. So with that, I've created all of my different structure. I create all the different management groups I want for my management needs. I want to have particular role-based access control that gets inherited down, particular policies I want, maybe budgets. Now, when we talk about entry roles and then Azure roles, typically permissions I have in Entra are not transferred over to the Azure resources, the Azure control plane with ARM but there's one time they do. So a very common scenario in an organization is that I have different subscription owners for these different subscriptions I have, and they leave the company. And remember, the owner of a subscription is the only person that can then assign permissions at that subscription level. And so if the person who was maybe the sole owner of your subscription leaves, that subscription has now become orphaned because no one can set permissions on it. Enter our global admin for Entra, Azure Superpower. Now, following all the normal best practices, we always want to limit the number of people we have that are 
global admins. There should be very few people that are global admins because they control the identity of our entry tenant. And identity is everything. Identity is our initial security perimeter. Now, outside of the two cloud-only, non-synced, break-glass global admin accounts you have that use a hardware FIDO um, pass key that's locked away somewhere, those very few humans who, you, who actually are global admins should always be using PIM, so Privileged Identity Management, so it's just in time and they elevate up only when they need those global admin permissions. But what I can now do is that little toggle is I can toggle this switch and when I toggle this switch, what it's actually doing at this root level right here is giving me something called user access administrator. And so it's literally, you saw that toggle and I'm toggling it to the right, that access management for Azure resources. And we can go and look at this. If we jump back over again, so here, you saw me, I, I toggled this switch. So access management for Azure resources, and I set it to yes, and then I hit save. If I now look at my tenant root group, and I look at its access control, and from here, look at my role assignments, what we're gonna see now is I have been given, so this is the user access administrator, my account has been given that role, but notice where it's been given, what is the scope? I'm looking at the root management group, but it's still been inherited from that root that sits directly under the entra tenant and is the parent of even the root management group. And if I go ahead and look specifically at that permission, if we look at all the things that make this up, it's mostly read actions. But the one we're really gonna care about, if I look at role assignments, slash write, this is the permission, create role assignments. So what it can now do is on its own, it's not this complete God mode, but, that user access admin, the really interesting part of that is under the authorization, it has this role assignments right capability. I can now go, because remember, what's the key point about management groups and the hierarchy? Any permission is inherited down. So it's setting it at this very top root, even of the root management group. So that permission is inherited. So now that global admin that has given themselves that access management for Azure, because they have that at the root, they now have it at every single subscription, every single management, every resource group, every resource that exists. So now they can unorphan that orphan subscription. They can go and either set themselves the owner role or give someone else the owner role. Now, a really important point here, this permission should never be left on because as you can see, it lets me give myself permission to any Azure resource there is. So it should be enabled only when absolutely needed, like, hey, I need to unorphan an orphan subscription by giving someone else the owner or myself. But then as soon as I've done that, I should go and toggle that switch back off. I should not leave it in place. Now you will remember I mentioned PIM. If I PIMed up to get my global admin permissions, set this toggle, which now gave me user access admin role assignment at this root level. If I then unpim, so de-elevate, it doesn't untoggle this, it doesn't remove this permission. 
So I would need to untoggle, get this removed, and then pin down. Now, if I'm ever curious, well, okay, who's doing this? The documentation walks through all the different methods, but obviously a very easy one is if I just go and look at my root management group, well, who has got the user access administrator? And I guess just to prove this, if I go and look anywhere in this entire hierarchy, so I look at a particular subscription and look at access control and look at role assignments, if we scroll down, well, there's the user access administrator. There's me from the root. If I looked at any resource, it gets inherited all the way down. So now I have those complete permissions. So that's, that's a really useful, nice thing to have. So, okay, this is all great. So what's the new capability that's actually been added? So now when I turn this on, or I turn it off, it's gonna go ahead and write to audit logs. So I now finally have full visibility. So it's going to go ahead and write an audit log. Well, it's gonna write one to the entra audit log. So if I add that toggle, I turn that on, there'll be an entry. If I remove it, there'll be an entry and of course, all the other various things. But it's also where you'll see this is under an Azure subscription. So if now I'm in Azure, remember the entry tenant is the directory service for my particular subscription. So if now if I go and look at the activity log, well, there's an option for my directory services log. And that too now will show if someone's turning this on or if someone's turning this off and all the various things. So I now have really good visibility into actually seeing people doing this and using it. So if we jump back and look at our particular subscription here and I go to my activity log, and what we're doing here is under activity, we have this option of directory activity. If I select this, well now ooh, we can see assigns the caller. So that was me doing this assignment. So now I've got a record in here, assigns the caller to user access administrator role. So I did that just before 5 a.m. There's also the one where I removed it a couple of hours ago. Removed that role assignment. So I now have the great visibility. And remember, the directory service is shared between all subscriptions. So when I go and look at directory activity, it doesn't matter which subscription I look at, I will see the same information because it's all using the same directory. Now, one of the challenges right now when I look at this is I don't have an export option. But if I jump over to Entra and under my identity, I go down to my monitoring and health and I'm looking at my audit log specifically. Well, firstly, I can change when we look at this service option, if I change it from all, instead I'm gonna change it to my Azure RBAC. So I'm just looking at Azure RBAC elevated access, click apply, and I get the same information. So I can go and see that, hey, the user access administrator has been removed from the user. And I can also go ahead and see the access has been elevated up for a user. I can get all of the full detail of that. And one of the really nice things about this is I do have the export data settings and I get the regular diagnostic settings options. So I could go ahead and send it to a storage account, an event hub, a log analytics workspace. I would care specifically about the audit logs option here if I wanted to go ahead and actually do that. So now with this enter option, 
I could then say, hey, yeah, let's through my diagnostic settings, all of the, the regular things we can do. Hey, I just want some retention that's cheap. Hey, I can send it to a storage account. Hey, I want to send it to some other system that is going to subscribe to these events and do something. Great, I'll send it to an event hub. I actually want to be able to perform analysis of this data, maybe trigger other types of systems. Well, I can send it to a log analytics workspace. And you get all of those same options we're used to seeing. Now, the other big thing, obviously, is as soon as we start talking about log analytics workspaces and the Entra, well, we have Sentinel. So Sentinel has an Entra ID connector. And Sentinel is leveraging log analytics workspaces. So Sentinel's Entra ID connector specifically understands these Azure RBA, RBAC Elevate Access events. So I could then go and do some action and trigger off them uh, from that. And so there you have it. I mean, that's really the key thing I wanted to talk about was just making sure that a, you understand that the power of that, but now we have the ability to have great visibility into its use, sending it to different systems, being able to go back and look at when that was done. So in today's story, we learned global admins have great power even on Azure resources, and that's one more reason to lock and limit down the global admins. But thanks to this new capability, we have full visibility into when this elevation of permission is performed. By the power of Greenfield, I have the power. Worth a try, stupid broken sword.